I'm Denise Smith and I'm the program manager with Rise Vermont. I want to welcome you to the Rise Vermont TV show. In partnership with Northwest Access TV, we're going to be providing weekly insight, inspiring ideas, and stories about how to live healthier, happier lifestyles in Northwest Vermont in the counties of Franklin and Grand Isle counties. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you enjoy the show. Hi, welcome to RISE TV. My name is Moretti. I am the School Wellness Specialist with RISE Vermont. And um, this, this episode, we've invited Lori Deering back um, again since we had so much fun the last time. Um, and she is going to help us uh, continue to stay safe. So my name is Lori Deering. I'm a physical therapist at Northwestern Medical Center. And today we are going to go over how to set up your desk with your computer or laptop to be ergonomic for you. Um, because you want to fit your workstation, not your workstation fit you. Um, so Moretti is going to be my employee that I'm going to educate on how to do this. All right. So the very first thing I want to look at when I'm looking at someone's workstation is their chair. The chair is the most critical aspect because it needs to be able to adjust and get you up to your workstation. Okay? So you got to make sure all features work. Do all your features work? Do all. <laughs> 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 we'll find out. <laughs> so the main feature you want is chair height. Um, when you are sitting at your chair, you want your hips to be at 90 degrees and your knees to be at 90 degrees. Um, so when you're sitting here, if you look at Moretti, he's at 90 degrees for his hip and his knee. The other aspect you want to look at is his elbow. So bend your elbow to 90 degrees. Now if you look at his forearm in relationship to our desk, he sits a little low. So that's where you need the height adjustment. In order for me to sit him at his desk, I will be raising the chair up. But for right now, I'm not going to do that. I want to still go over the rest of the features to this chair. Uh, this chair has a lot of features. Uh, some of them I do not use. One other thing you want to make sure you look at is the backrest. So Moretti, yeah. you have a normal curve here in your spine, correct? Yep. Okay. These chairs, most chairs nowadays have a normal bump to them, which are supposed to sit where your normal curve is. How does that feel on your back? Um, I would, I would actually raise it up just okay. a little bit. So chairs have different ways of raising the height, but most of them are right here. Sometimes there's a knob underneath the chair that will actually raise the backrest height, or some other chairs you actually lift them up, unlock it, um, then it comes back down and you'll hear little clicks as it goes up. My chair just has a knob. How does that feel in your back? That's, that's like right in the curve. That's okay. Right. So you want to make sure your backrest is fitted right. The other thing you want to look at that this chair has a feature for, and a lot of chairs do not have this, and this is something you want to look at on individuals. Um, so in my household, my husband is 6'4", I'm 5'5". Five five. Um, so we got different thigh lengths. We need a seat pan that's going to accommodate both of our lengths of our thighs. That is called the seat pan adjustment. On this chair, it's underneath. So if I look at Moretti's leg, I'm going to take three fingers. Normally I would have Moretti. Actually, Moretti, you take three okay. fingers. Place it behind your knee. Where does that chair hit on your thigh compared to where your fingers are? So is it the, the front of the seat so, pan or so where you want it's to do actually here, touching? Where are the chairs touching? Yeah. So it's close. About an inch or two, isn't it? Yeah. Difference? I would, I would if, if my fingers need to be touching... The chair, I'd need to back up a couple inches, but or, I can't. Or move the seat pan. Or move the seat. Yes. Okay. So the way this can do on several on different chairs is I have a lever underneath. So reach down between, nope, down between the legs. Pull uh -huh. that lever up and scoot your butt forwards. Oh. So your seat pan, did you yeah, feel it go I out? I did. Yeah. Okay. So now you feel it. There we go. Okay. So and my back right against the seat. You should be back against the backrest. Yep. And you got your three finger widths yep, and the right chair there. should hit. And it's touching okay. the chair. The one thing you want to be careful, and well, let me tell you this. The other adjustment, sometimes it's the backrest will actually move back and forth. So it's not the seat. It's actually the backrest the that backrest. may move. Okay. Um, so you have to play with the chair, know what your features are and what each one does. So now that we've done this, you want to be careful. Most chairs, Moretti, can you stand? If you look at this chair, it down slopes. They call that a watercrest fall. So you got to be careful. Moretti's thigh may actually hit here, 
And then you've got this extra part of the chair that may hit his calf. Have a seat and yeah, see if it, it is. It is brushing up against my calf. So in order for Moretti to sit here, 90 degrees, remember, you want to make sure he's not getting pressure on his calf. If you get pressure on your calf, you could just cause yeah. some calf issues. Yeah, it's just brushing. It's not. If it's only brushing, brushing I'm not worried about it. All now, right. if he had it out too far and just put constant pressure, then you want to back the chair. Okay. Okay. So that's the seat pin. Other things you can look at are armrests. I removed my armrests several years ago uh, because I didn't use them. But if you have an armrest, of course, they're out here on the side. Mm -hmm. I highly suggest them to be adjustable in height. And the reason is, and you'll see in a moment, I call it bellying up to the bar or bellying up to your desk. You want to slide in. A lot of times armrests will actually hit and prevent you from going in far enough. Okay. Um, I got rid of mine because I had a desk drawer, a keyboard drawer, and it just got in the way. So armrests you can have, make them adjustable. The other features that this chair has is it has a tilt. You can tilt this chair forwards, you can tilt this chair backwards. Some people will use those if they need it for back relief, pressure relief from certain areas of their buttocks or thighs. Um, again, play with the chair. I'm going to push up on this. Okay. You're going to feel the chair want to go forwards. Okay. Or it should. Okay. Oh, All right. <laughs> Move the whole chair. Can you rock the whole chair now? Oh, yeah. Okay, so here he can rock the chair, and sometimes these are lockable, so I could lock him in right there at that tilt. So if he needs to take some pressure off and put a little bit more on his back, he can tilt himself this way. Um, I'm going to lock it again. Most of the times I tell people to lock it, find the position that feels comfortable, and then lock it in. So find your comfortable. Okay. Okay, and then you lock it down. Another feature this chair has is it has a backrest adjustable tilt. So I'm going to unlock it. Okay. So tilt your back back and forth. So now this is just for the backrest. Some people, their thighs feel fine, but their back can't stay sitting upright. Yeah. Um, so they may need to adjust their backrest. Again, I ask people to lock it into position, not have it free falling. Um, so find the position you like, and I will lock it. Okay. Okay. So he is locked in there. Uh, I think that is all the features on my chair. Yes. So those are the features of my chair. That is how you set a chair up for an individual. So with the armrest, since we don't have one here to demonstrate, um, when you said adjust, am I adjusting so that I'm leaning when I'm typing that my arms are against Good the armrest? Good question. So the only reason the armrests are used are for resting while you are not working. Okay. So if I'm working, I don't want my arms resting. Major nerve right here, ulnar okay. nerve. Yeah. Um, arm rests are usually positioned just right so that nerve can start getting pressure on it. So if you rest too much on that, you can cause ulnar neuritis. Okay. Um, so you don't want to. So while I'm while I'm keying, I don't want to be resting on right. an arm rest or, or even on a right. table. Okay. But if I come in and talk to you, you can go ahead and rest. Okay. Okay? Or if you're on the phone, go ahead and rest upon the arm rest. Okay. Okay? So now we're going to adjust Moretti to his workstation. So we're ready. I need you to stand. Okay. We're going to raise the chair all the way up. Have a seat. Scoot into the desk. I can't touch the floor. <laughs> we'll fix that in a moment. That's good. <laughs> so when Moretti scoots into his desk, he already told you he can't touch the floor, but we'll address that in a few moments. So when he's sitting here, he wants his elbows at 90 degrees. Let's bring the keyboard back. Okay, place your hands over your keyboard. So if you look at Moretti's forearm right now, and his positioning over his keyboard, you can see his forearm slants down a little. That means he's not at 90 degrees. So Moretti, I'm going to lower you just a bit. No, nope, you don't have to sit up. Okay, now put your arms. If you look at his arms now, they look more level. Okay? So you may have to play with the chair. I like to start it with up high and slowly lower instead of going low to high to high. Um, it just makes it easier. So that would be the position there for Moretti. When he sits at his desk, as I told you earlier, I would like him to belly up to it. So which means you scoot right up next to your desktop. Your keyboard is right in front of you. Your arms should be straight, hanging down here, elbows bent, forearms over the keyboard. And that can be either handwriting or working at your keyboard or laptop. Um, okay, so so any questions? Right, yeah, or right. So again, yep. it's still okay. Yep. So Moretti, push your tray back, your keyboard back. Now type. 
So here. if you look at Moretti right now, you can tell he's not in good position. Look where his arm is. Remember, his arm's supposed to be straight down. So if I were to see an employee doing this, I would be, you need to first of all bring that keyboard back to you. Yep, and then there's better arm position. So that's how he needs to be sitting there. Scoot back away from the desk for a moment. Can you touch the floor? His feet can't sit flat on the floor. I don't know if you can tell that. Um, but if you look at his heels, they're not completely flat. I think this is going to be too high. Try that. Yeah, that's too high. Okay, so this footrest is too high for Moretti, and you can see because of his hip angle. It's not at 90 degrees anymore. So I'm going to grab, that was four inches. I'm going to grab a ream of paper. If you have a ream of paper at home, it is two inches in height. So stick that under those feet. So now if you look at Moretti's body, he's got the 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. So if I were to suggest for Moretti to have a footrest and he didn't want to use a ream of paper, he would need a two inch footrest at this point. Okay? And a two by four is not two inches, that's an inch and a half. Correct. So. <laughs> Let's push this forward. Okay. So go sit up to your desk. So this is the All way right. Moretti should look when he is sitting at his desk. Now the next thing we're going to look at is his keyboard. I'm not sure if anybody can see on the camera, but the legs of this keyboard are up. So these little doohickeys are the legs on the keyboard. You want to have those legs down. And the reason for that is, is the angle of the wrist. So when Moretti has his hands here, and I'm going to also give him a wrist rest in a few moments, but when he has his hands here, you want your hand at either neutral, which is zero, or just slightly extended where it's up. Okay. If you have the foot rests on the keyboard up, it tends to extend you more. Mm. This can cause, it can't cause carpal tunnel, but it can aggravate the ligaments, tendons, and structures that go through the carpal tunnel region. Okay. Okay. I'm also going to give him a wrist rest. Wrist rest will go in the front of the keyboard. And now if you look at his wrists even more, he is better angled and able to rest, but the same with the armrest, you do not rest while you are typing. Okay. You don't have to hold them up like that. So when you're typing, I don't, like want you, I don't want you hunkered down. <laughs> so you're not hunkering okay. down and moving your hands all over. You're free flowing. Okay. Well, I hunt and peck, so oh. <laughs> there's no free flow here. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's not re uh, you're not resting, that's all. You can okay. be touching it, but you just don't want to be hunkered down. Okay. Okay. Um, if you are not typing, talking on the phone, talking to someone, then you can be resting. Okay. And it's a softer surface, and you so want, it causes yep. less damage yep. than just You want a soft surface. surface. I usually uh, suggest gel or um, just a soft one, I guess. That's what, yeah. Could, if somebody was, say, working at home, could they, like, roll a towel? You could, like but this? it might be too bulky. Okay. You know, it depends how small the towel like a is. Dish towel. Yep, yeah. Yep. Okay. But they could try a towel. But that's something softer than just your kitchen. Your hard table. surface. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. And especially the edge. You want to watch the edges uh, of structures because yep. it's more of a ninety degree sharp edge. Okay. So that's the keyboard. Any questions with your keyboard setup? No. Okay. So legs down, and then so as long as my elbows are next to my body, yep. then that's where that's I, good would, I would move the keyboard. That correct. Okay. All right. Let's look at the mouse. So reach for that mouse. Pretend you're working with it. So right here, you can see Moretti. Actually, you might not be able to see Moretti's arm. <laughs> we'll move it to the right. So reach for it, though. Slide it forwards. Yeah. So if Moretti's mouse is up there, and I've seen this, um, if you look at his arm again, he's not hanging down by the side of his body. So I would tell him, bring your wrist rest back, or your wrist, yeah, geez, bring your mouse back so that his arm is at his side and he's working his mouse. Again, here I am going to put a wrist rest. So if you use a towel idea at home, you can stretch it across both areas. Okay. So his wrist rest again is just to help support his wrist so he's not getting too much of an angle there. Now Moretti, when you use that mouse, actually first of all, show me how you use a mouse. How do you move it? So I slide it back and forth. Wow! Moretti, you did that correct. <laughs> most how, how people. How would I have done it wrong? Most just people. like this? Yes. Oh, so I leave my wrist in one place yes. and just 
twist my hand. Yeah. So Moretti did it correct. A lot of people will hunker down and use their wrist muscles mm. to move that mouse. Okay? You want to use your shoulders. Don't hunker. Let your wrist move and use your shoulder to move that mouse, which is what you did. Okay? okay? Yep. So that's the mouse. If you are right-handed, and I don't suggest this for everybody, if you're right-handed and want to use your left more, put your mouse on your left-hand side. There are aspects on the computer so you can make it a left-handed mouse compared to a right-handed mouse. Um, but that evens out, starts to even out a little bit of wear and tear, so you're not always using your right arm, which is your dominant arm, um, compared to your left that does nothing. Okay. Okay? It will take two, about two months to get used to it, though. And okay. I know. <laughs> the next thing we want to look at on Moretti, we're going to look at monitor. So Moretti, don't stare at anything on that monitor or anything like that. I want you to look okay. right straight ahead of you. Yeah. Show me with your arm, where does your line of vision fall? The bottom of this paper. Okay. So for this type of situation there, you can do a couple of different things with your monitor. It used to be back in the olden days, which about seven years ago or so, you wanted the monitor height at the same height of his line of vision. So basically, I would lift this up. And your line of vision should fall about on the top icons. Is that correct right now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he would need probably a four-inch lift under there. But nowadays, they're allowing you to have the monitor lower as long as it's comfortable, doesn't bother the neck or anything like that. And the reason for that is when you read a book, a magazine, paper, you're already looking down. Your neck is used to looking down. Okay. Um, so I don't mind the monitors being lower. You just want to make sure it's not too low and make sure it's comfortable. I will also educate them how to raise it up so they're viewing the bottom icons because when you view the bottom icons at the higher level, you should be able to just scan with your eyes without moving your head. So if you have neck issues and it hurts to look down, we would raise this up by putting reams of paper or you can buy the things that um, are they're called uh, monitor risers underneath yep. here. And you should be able to look straight ahead, view with your eyes, and scan that whole page. And so I would probably put it like halfway. Like that just feels too low. Too low. Um, but it didn't really feel like another ream of paper. I do not have another ream of paper. Let's try this. Can you lift that up already? So this is that four inch step. Try that one. If we can. How does that feel for height? Um, yeah, I would, I would put that lower. But this is good just for demonstration purposes right now. Yep. So you would adjust it to how you feel comfortable. A lot of people work on laptop nowadays and they're looking down anyways. Right. The one thing you want to look at with and assess yourself, I would ask him already, do you wear bifocals? I do. Okay. That, that's why I'm sort of like yep. backing up to I look noticed you. I noticed you. I noticed you did that. <laughs> So Moretti wears bifocals. This is too high for him. I don't know if anybody's noticed the subtle change. When we put it up here, he extended his neck a little bit so he could read through the bottom portion of his glasses. Um, that is too high for him, so lower would be better. Yeah. I just don't have a lower. I don't have two yeah. inches in here. Okay. Um, so we would lower that. So be aware of bifocals. You want to have your monitor lower so you can read through without compromising your neck. Trifocals. Of course, those are the three different levels, um, so you can use middle section to supposedly look through. The other thing you want to look at, Moretti, put your arm straight out in front of you. Okay. Monitor distance. Rule of thumb used to be one arm's length away. Nowadays, you can relax your arms. You can even have that monitor back further. With this desk set up, this is as far as we go. But some people have long desks, and they prefer to have them back further, especially with the bigger monitors. Um, but it can be up to 40 inches away from your eyeball. Really? Yes. That seems really far yep. away. Um, but they say that's where the eyes start converging together and working huh. together. So it can be further away. But rule of thumb, one arm's length away from you. Okay. The tilt of the monitor used to be straight up and down, flat. Nowadays, you can have a slight tilt to it. Not too much, but just a slight tilt. If you are someone who uses two monitors, and you use them both equally, you want the split to be right in the middle of your face. So one monitor would be here, one monitor here, angled just slightly towards you. So they'd be turned so they wouldn't be, like this. Yeah, so more of a, a yep. very shallow V. Yep. Okay. Yep. 
Now if you use one monitor more than the other, you're going to want to put that monitor on your dominant eye side. So mm. if I use my left monitor more, because that's where all my applications are and my right is just overflow, I want to make sure I'm left eye don dominant. Do you know how to find your eye dominant? No. Okay. Make a triangle with your fingers out in front of you. Look at this tack up here. Okay. Well, through your hole. Oh. <laughs> Do you see that tack with both, uh, both eyes through your triangle? Yeah. Okay. Close one eye. Mm -hmm. Note what happens to that tack. What happened to it? Uh, I closed my left eye and it didn't move all that much. Okay. So open your left eye and close your right eye. It moved a lot. Okay. So Moretti's dominant eye will be his right eye. If it pretty much stays centered in your triangle, that's your dominant eye. If it moves out, that's your non-dominant eye. Oh. So in Moretti's case, if he uses one monitor more than the other, his right side will be a little more centered compared to the left. Okay? I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> that's great. So Moretti's going to go back to his office and do a lot of corrections. I will, because <laughs> I do have two <laughs> monitors, and I have them set up wrong. Yeah. So that's going to be monitor. Any questions with the monitor? Um, so you said tilt, yep. um, some of that too would then be dependent upon glare, Correct. right? So if there's Correct. overhead light or if you have a window around you or near you. So if you want to look at glare on your monitor, turn it off. Okay. This monitor looks pretty black, I don't see any specific glare yeah. on it. Now yes, if you tilt yeah. it like that, there is glare. Yeah. Um, so you may have to play with the tilt. Okay. If you are sitting at home and you're at a window or even at an office, I've seen these. Some people love to look out the window while they're working on their computer. Yeah. That's a no-no. You want your monitor at least at a 90 degree angle from the window because of the glare and the glint of the sun. Oh. Okay, okay so you wouldn't... You, you wouldn't want to be looking out the because window because of the, of the brightness of the outside compared to your monitor. Well, what if I'm working on outside uh, on my laptop? I would suggest being in the shade. Okay. Or turn yourself so maybe your shadow falls upon the, the monitor. Okay, that's fair. So you're sitting cool. opposite the sun. Yep. Okay. Your monitors also have contrast and brightness buttons. So you can play with the buttons that are on your monitor to change the contrast and brightness to see if it changes okay. the glare. Sometimes they have devices out there that you can put over the top that changes glares too. Mm -hmm. Some people have said, put like a little visor over your monitor. You just take a little piece of paper, have it overhang a couple inches, and it acts like a visor okay. to any type of glare. Okay. Anything cool. else on monitors? Does that um, seem good? No. Yep. Okay. The next one I want to look at. So we've done monitor, we've done keyboard, we've done mouse. Mm -hmm. Some people use document holders. Do you have a document holder already? I don't. Okay. So I usually ask that question for some people because a lot of people do some paperwork and they're putting it into their uh, computer. If you are one that does that, you want your paper on a document holder about the same level of your monitor on the right hand side for you because that's your and dominant, your dominant eye. eye. Yeah. Yes. If you don't have a document holder, you can place your paper here so it's an easily scanned down and up from paper to monitor. But okay. not over, like you over don't here. want it over there because you can cause neck issues. Right. You know, if you're looking over there 20, 30 times, you can start getting a neck strain. Or I'd wind up. Yep. Which, yep. which then just throws off my Throws off body. your, yep, yeah. the okay. way your body's positioned. So that's so document. Putting it either there in is front fine. of your monitor yep. or to the, the side, your dominant side. Correct. Okay. Correct. The next thing I talk about, and this is a lot of education, Moretti, it is placement of items at your desk. That can be your pen or pencil, stapler, calculator, phone, um, post-it pads, you know, whatever you're using. If you're someone who drinks a lot while they're sitting at your desk, you might have a water bottle or a cup of soda or something there too. You want those items placed, <clears throat> excuse me, within a 45 degree reach of your shoulder if you do it frequently. So I'm going to break this down. Okay. Constantly, you're using your keyboard and mouse, correct? Yes. Most people are constantly using yep. their keyboard and mouse. More than anything else, yeah. If you are doing that, your arm should be straight at your side, elbow 90 degrees, hands are over your keyboard or right next to your mouse. Yep. Okay? The next thing is frequently. Frequently means one third to two thirds of your work day. Water. So if I drink a lot of water, we want to avoid the reach. If you look at Moretti's arm right now, 
He's maybe 75 degrees of shoulder flexion, maybe 80 degrees. Um, that is too far of a reach if he reaches for that 10 times throughout the day or even 20 times throughout the day. He wants to keep it within a 45 degree angle from your arm to your trunk here at the shoulder. So he would have to move it closer to him. Or if I put it... Yep, or even there. So the 45 okay. degrees is from here out to the side. Rotation. And that's okay. on both sides. Okay. So Moretti, reach for the phone. You guys can't see this, but again, his trunk went forwards and his shoulder is more than 45 degrees. So I'm going to tell Moretti to move his phone. It's not focused. Yeah, there. Yeah. So now if he reaches for his phone, he's within a more of a 45 degree angle there. And it's nice that there's something on there. And to be honest with you, I don't like that. No? I do okay. not suggest those <laughs> to people. But it's not nice. <laughs> it looks nice. <laughs> Um, the reason is because if you trap your phone between your ear and your shoulder, uh -huh. see what Moretti's head is doing? It's angling down, plus he's pushing his shoulder up. This muscle right here called the upper trapezius is activated. If he is talking on the phone for 15 minutes, guess what this muscle is going to do? It's going to tighten yeah, up and right. make muscle spasm. It's going to aggravate him. And if I'm mousing and tapping. Yep, yep. Yeah. So if he's using the phone a lot, my first suggestion is a headset. Cordless are the best way to go, but if you can't get a cordless, then do a corded one. Um, but those are on your ears. You don't need the phone unless you're dialing out, and you never have to tilt your head. The only confusion is if someone's on the phone, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and you start chatting away with them. Also, the thing with a phone, I like to put it on the non-dominant side. So Moretti is right-handed. We're going to put it on his left, so when he answers the phone, he answers it with his left, he holds it with his left, go ahead, and now he has his hand available for mousing, for writing, and even doing a little bit of keyboarding if he needs to. Okay, so okay. it leaves his right arm free, so he doesn't have to have the cord across, so bring it over to your right, he doesn't have the cord across his body, he's not trapping it between his head and shoulder, um, it just makes it easier. Okay, so phone non-dominant side close to you. Okay. Now if there's anything else that we're ready were to use here, I have a calculator over here. If he were to use that calculator often, I would say Moretti, bring it closer to you. Now I'm going to say put it on your left hand side. Why? And, and the reason is because if you put it on your right, you're going to start spreading yourself out, out, out. You see what I'm saying? The yeah. further out you're going to be. Yeah. So if he puts it on his left, guess what? He's got to use his left hand. His right's being used all day because he's keying, he's writing, he's flipping drinking pages, my water. he's drinking his water. So if he puts this on his left side, okay. it'll make him use his left hand to take some of the stress and strain and wear and tear off from his right side. Okay? My left hand doesn't do math as well That's as That's fine. Right. It will learn. Okay. Old dogs do learn new <laughs> tricks. It just takes a lot longer <laughs> a lot to learn longer. it. Um, it can take up to, like I said, four to eight weeks before your body becomes accommodated to a change that is done to your computer. Okay. I will tell you, when I go into most clinics and I put the legs down, someone will immediately sit down and put them up. It's like they know immediately. Wow. Because it feels different. If you're right. used to reaching this way, now all of a sudden I'm yeah. down. Okay? Yeah. So this is a desk with minimal stuff on it. Some people work and they have stuff spewed all over the place. So you want to make sure it's close. Any questions? And if you had like a printer or a scanner, again, it should be something that you're not Correct. reaching if it's something you use. Correct. Often. So what I suggest to people, because I've been into immigration and they're using their printers and stuff quite often, they have a big desk set up. Yeah. I will ask them to either move it away from them so they have to get up more often, or I will ask them to bring it a little closer and not reach as much, or compile. You know, can you print off 20 pages? and only reach for it once instead of reaching for every single individual yeah. page. And the getting up and moving is actually a great yes. idea. Yes, I so just that thought of that are, when I said that. So that you are not only not reaching, but then you're also getting up and Correct. moving and you're not sitting Correct. all day long. Yeah. So suggestions are getting up every 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And when you get up, do a few stretches, walk around a little bit. It only has to be for 30 seconds to a minute. And also during that get up time, do a far distance gaze. Because right now you're looking what? We'll say three feet from you, and yeah. I don't even think that's three feet. So that's a short distance. So you may go to a window, look out the window, and do a far distance gaze. 
You know, if there's a bird out there in the distance, watch the bird for 30 seconds. And that just gets your eyes back out of that short distance range. And a nice head clear, too. Today's certified WIC activity code is Office Safety. Thank you.